Hey boys and girls, Cross Archon here with another video bringing you more information about Operation Velvet Shell. It is being officially released on February 7th, where Season 2 Pass owners will be granted two new operators, Jackal and Mira, for free, and the map coastline will be available for both the Season Pass and non Season Pass holders. We are super close to seeing the new operators in action, but today we got a small preview of them using their weapons in the new map coastline, however, still leaving a lot to be desired about how the gadgets actually work. Let's get right into it. Today we were given Jackal's icon. In my opinion it looks really cool, almost like a combination of a footprint and the gadget that looks like an eye located on top of his visor. Along with this, we got a more detailed look into his primary and secondary weapons and a small snippet of those in action in close quarter combat scenario. Jackal is confirmed an attacker and is equipped with the C70 assault rifle which is able to hold 30 rounds per magazine and the Ida 12L shotgun as primary weapons. For the secondary weapons he has access to the Ida 12S shotgun, the PDW9 SMG and a USP40 pistol. If you look closely, the PDW9 SMG has a drum barrel that is able to hold 50 bullets per magazine. The shotgun is going to be very useful to make giant kill holes because of its spread, maybe even a vaultable axis. But in the clip that you're going to see here in a little bit, it has the potential for the killing power as well. Jackal is the first attacking operator in Team Rainbow to have a shotgun as a secondary weapon. I think that's really awesome. In terms of gadget, we're still not sure about what Jackal will carry yet, but as a 2 speed and a 2 armor operator, I'm guessing he will have a breaching charge and a claymore. The snippet of the gameplay that we were given shows that Jackal may only be able to use his gadget a total of 3 times. Other than that, I really don't know what the 3 bars represent that show up on the HUD when his visor is activated. Now we also see that the footprints disappear when the defenders they belong to is killed in action. Also, the ability doesn't get drained like Cavetta's as previously speculated. I guess we'll just have to wait till tomorrow to see it fully in action. Moving on to Mira, she's confirmed a defender, more of a defending architect who is going to carry a maximum of two one-way mirrors that can be placed in a breakable or reinforced walls to create a line of sight previously impossible in Rainbow Six. This brings a change to the meta and how the defenders can have access to intel outside of relying on Valkyrie's cams, Echo's drone, or even a roamer's intel. I'm confident in saying that Mira is going to change the meta in defending a lot of sites in Rainbow Six Siege. She's a 1 speed, 3 armor defending operator making her a less viable option for roaming and will likely play the role of an anchor. This makes sense because we may need Mira to be able to expel the glass from her gadget which requires her to be in close proximity of her deployed one-way mirrors. Let's look at her weapons. Mira has access to both the Ida 12S and the Ida 12L, but let's be real here. We're more excited about her being equipped with the Vector more than anything. Other than that, she carries a Nitro Cell which is confirmed, and I'm guessing she'll be equipped with a deployable shield to complement her gadget. We also got to see a lot of beautiful shots of the new map coastline, and I have to hand it to the developers. This is, by far, in Rainbow Six Siege, the most gorgeous looking map, both inside and out. From what we were shown, it looks like the perimeter surrounding the Villa Le Perla Blanca, or the White Pearl, has turning corridors, while the center courtyard is more suited for long line of sights. This means that the weapon choices, especially the sights you put on your primary weapon, will depend on how you want to attack the objective. The second floor is confirmed to be completely destructible with multiple hatches allowing access between the two floors, and the devs have designed the map so that the central courtyard will be the most dangerous and will see most of the action. It also allows for quick transitions to the interior and the exterior of the map. Honestly, I'm just letting the beauty sink in and I can't wait to run around in the villa. Additionally, we were also shown three spawn points for coastline. The first one being out front that has a limited means of entry into the villa and is the safest spawn location. The second is by the pool which requires you to move from cover to cover as there are a lot of vertical platforming at play. The third spawn location is the ruins and this one is likely going to be any glass player's favorite. No matter how the developers try to balance out the spawn location, I'm sure the siege players will be creative about finding ways to spawn trap attackers. On a different note, we're getting the elite skin for Rook, and I cannot wait to see the elite armor pack. 
The last thing that we were given, which I'm not entirely sure how to feel about, is the new user interface being implemented into the game. I'll leave the clip here for you to decide if you're going to like it or not. Anyways guys, that's the recap for day 2 of the invitational reveals for Rainbow Six Siege Operation Velvet Shell. Until next time, spread the love.